Hi, everybody. This is Peter Trukowski, and I'm delighted today uh, to have another segment uh, in a series of conversations with, with local community members. And today we're chatting with Rachel Bradway. Uh, Rachel is a, a member of a longtime family in Hillsdale and uh, is now a business partner with her husband, Rob Bradway Plumbing. Welcome, Rachel. Hi, Peter. Thanks for being here. Um, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I know you were you were resistant to, to, to do this, but but I'm really excited to, to 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 be able to chat with you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your family history? Uh, you're living on uh, in the farm uh, in the farmhouse that was part of you know, generations. Um, my great grandparents, Margaret and Egbert Bosberg, bought this house um, in 1920. So it's been in my family for about a hundred years. Um, my kids are the fifth generation born and raised here. Uh, it was a dairy farm for about 60 years. And then it was a pheasant farm for about 15 to 20 years. And it's been in the plumbing business now uh, for nine years here. So there's been a lot of um, family history, um, a lot of work that has come out of this farm. And um, yeah, it, it's got um, great family qualities to it. Was it the Pollock family? Were they the original settlers of this particular farm? Um, Margaret and Egbert Vosberg were from originally the Copic. Um, they had a long history um, here in the area, in the community. Um, and they uh, lived here on Whippoorwill and they ended up buying this house. Uh, my grandmother was about nine years old when she um, came to this house. So she grew up here. Um, my grandfather, John Pollock, is actually um, an immigrant and orphaned from Ireland. Um, so he came here and he was actually staying at a house down the road. So I think that's how they kind of met. Oh, I see. Sorry, of course. So the Vosbergs um, were, were even earlier. Uh, what is it? You know, it must feel interesting to be part of living in this house with these old bones, with these ancestors knocking around. Um, yeah, I think they surround us sometimes, you know, I, I don't know, but, um, it, it's, it's a great, it's a great quality. Um, I know that my grandmother played on certain things in rocks and streams, um, as my children are, and as I did, because I lived here when I was a child. Um, so it's, it's just a great history that's being passed down to the future generations. And it's not something that you find, um, around this area anymore. So, so I, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it and continue on you know, the legacy of this house. It's really a rare uh, phenomenon to be able to, to have that gift, to be part of that, that family legacy, not just rare around here, but I think rare everywhere in the United States. Right, right. So how, how, did, the, how did you um, get the good luck to be able to, to, to reside on this farm? Um, well, I've always been very close to Uncle Jack. Um, you know, he was like a father figure to me growing up. Um, and every Sunday, um, Bob and I owned a house after we got married. Um, we owned a house in Stottville and we were renovating it. And we wanted to have a family. And we were looking at properties um, and we were gonna build or we were gonna remodel another house in the area here. And Uncle Jack would come over every Sunday and, and Bob and Uncle Jack would pal around and do projects and I would cook dinners. And he knew we were looking at other properties. And he came to us and said, you know, I'm getting older. Um, I would like to pass this and keep this in the family if you would be willing to purchase it and work on it. And, you know, Bob and I thought about it and we were like, this house is a huge undertaking. And we were also concerned because we said to Uncle Jack, um, you were born and raised here. You know, what are your plans? And he said, well, I was thinking maybe I could live with you guys. And um, there's a section in the house that's got a living room, a bathroom and um, a bedroom. And we said, yeah, of course, you know, we couldn't picture it any other way. So that's kind of how he brought it to us. And then we accepted and that's kind of how it got brought to us. That is fantastic. And I remember chatting with Jack several times uh, about, about his life there on the farm. And, you know, we interviewed him, you may recall. Uh, and so he talked about the history of the farm uh, mm -hmm. and he couldn't resist talking about, about you and, and, and Bob and the kids and what luck he had to be able to live with this family there. Yes, he is a, a, a pivotal, pivotal point in our, in our lives and our children's lives. So we were happy to have him here for when we had him here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Rachel, you and, and, and Bob now have this thriving local business. Uh, tell us a little bit about the origins of the business and, and 
uh, why you guys chose to take this on? Um, well, ever since I've known Bob, which has been a very long time, um, he's always wanted to own his own business and, and be his own, his own person and, you know, pave his own path. Um, he's very dedicated, very hardworking, um, and he learned this trade. He was in the construction field and learned to build houses. Uh, and then he kind of, um, kind of fell into this trade and learned the plumbing and HVAC business. And it came to a point where we, you know, said, well, now's the time. And it, it was um, 2008 with the, with the fall of the economy. And he had a truck and a trailer. And um, I was uh, working as a silk screen printer. And, you know, we had our house and we were getting ready to buy this house. And we were like, well, it's all or nothing. So let's just go ahead and jump in. And he has done a wonderful job at building this thriving business. You've also done a wonderful job of uh, restoring the house, restoring the barns. Uh, has that always been part of the plan? Um, yes, it was. Um, it's slowly, piece by piece, we worked and, and we, um, we did it. And um, we're still working on it. It's just it's such a work in progress. Um, we, we had the business here and it was perfect because we had the barns across the street and our original office was in my living room and it was a small desk um, and out in the barns, it was just like a little garage and you know, the, the roof was falling in and the parts were all around. And so we decided, you know, if we're gonna grow, we have to grow, you know, the shop and we have to grow that way too. So we had um, the barns redone um, and they're done beautifully. Um, but we've grown bigger than, than this property. And also having a business at your home location, you know, we never shut off. We never can just sit down and just have dinner. You know, there's always somebody coming and going. And, and even on the weekends, there's always somebody here, which is okay, but you know, you just never get a break. So we decided that we would move to a different location and it, and it took about a year or two to find the location that we have. And we're absolutely um, thrilled with it where we're gonna be moving to, so. When you anticipate being in having the business centered in, in that new location. And I assume you're talking about the, the site opposite Four Brothers. Yeah, um, we anticipate um, 2021. So hopefully coming, coming soon, hopefully. Yeah, great, I'm sure there'll be a big relief. You have to manage a lot, not only people, you know, your employees coming and going, but you've got a house full of kids as well and. Uh... Yes, it's, um, it's quite a full house. Um, it's, it's, I couldn't picture it any other way. I mean, I grew up in this house and that's how it was. It was always full of people and you would walk in and there was, you never knew who was gonna be sitting at the table and there was um, fresh homemade bread on the counter, you know? So I couldn't imagine it any other way, but it is a lot of craziness. It's a lot of mayhem, but I think we, um, we try to handle it well. <laughs> uh, we should talk about, about COVID-19 and, and, and its impact. Um, um, so, many, so many things I want to ask you. Um, what it's been like to be um, a working mom, maintaining the business, working with, with, with Bob, homeschooling your kids right now. Uh, where do you want to start? That's a big story. Um, I think the last 13 weeks you know, have been a challenge. I think that we rose to the challenge. Um, I don't think that anybody would have ever thought that this could have happened or would have happened. Um, I think that we have had so many Zoom meetings with the school. Um, the school has done a really great job at keeping the kids and reaching out to the children. Um, the teachers have been more than helpful. Uh, they have all reached out to us through text and, and emails and phone calls and Zoom meetings. And they've even come by the house to drop off um, supplies for the kids. Um, so every day we have been Zooming. We have anywhere from one to four Zooms a day. Um, I have a preschooler, a kindergarten, and a second grader. So it's quite busy. Um, the distance <laughs> learning, I think, um, works, wor works well. But I think at that age, it falls a lot on the caregivers. So it's a lot of running around. You know, somebody will be in a Zoom meeting, and I have to run to the next room to to break up a fight or, you know, something like that. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of craziness, but um, we try to make the best of it. And I think that we've done a pretty good job at the school. You mentioned that you are in a room that you designated as the school room in your home. Tell yep. us about it. Um, well, I started out um, the first week and we had it at the kitchen table. And now our business is run out of um, the barns and then the office is, is in another room in our house. Um, my brother-in-law, Peter, um, is in the office with me. So he was in the office taking phone calls. Um, the kids were sitting at the table, you know, arguing and, you know, we had 
computers with, with teachers on them. And I was like, we have to, we have to get organized because this isn't going to work. So I took one of the rooms and I put a desk out there and I put the computer and it has a door and I shut it and it has a big window so I can see the kids and see if they're paying attention <laughs> or what they're doing. Um, so that's kind of how we made it work for us. Fantastic. And how has your schedule changed uh, as, as a partner in the business? How have you adapted the last couple of months? Um, well, with having the kids home, it's been very stressful trying to work um, with them doing Zoom meetings and then you trying to be in the office and, and to work. Um, I give props to anybody that's tried to, to, to work and have your children at home. So what we've had to do is I now school the kids during the week and then at nighttime when Bob comes home, I'll pop in the office and I'll get some work done. And then I also work on the weekends. So we kind of trade off. Whereas before the kids would go to school or they would go to the grandparents' house um, and then I would work during the week. So we've had to make a little bit of changes, but we, we worked with it. <laughs> My goodness, um, working around the clock sounds like. Um, yeah, I mean, there's some sleepless nights. You know, there's a little bit of stress, but it's nothing we can't handle. <laughs> So, so what are your plans this summer with the kids? Work continues, I assume. Yes. Um, we're starting to now go back to um, visiting the grandparents. Um, since there's no park program, um, they're probably going to have to go to the grandparents for a couple hours here and there. Um, and just, you know, basically just do as much as we can, or I'm doing as much as I can with the paperwork and to keep up. But it probably will be, you know, I'll keep going through the summer. So, on yeah. the what, what, what is the cycle of business like? Like, what is your business? What is your busy time? Uh, is, have you noticed that? Uh, what do things get crazy? Our business, because we're plumbing and we're HVAC, um, we're busy all year. Um, our one slow month is March. And when this happened, happened mm. um, it was March and we were already very slow because it's the ending of the heating season. It's before AC season. People aren't really doing so many projects yet. So we were very slow. And when this happened, we, we sat down and we were like, are we essential? Are we going to be working? Are people going to still call us? What's going to happen? And so for a week, it was, it was a lot of sleepless nights. Um, and we were going back and forth about what we were going to do. And then the phone started to ring. And the calls were a little bit different. The calls were, can you open my pool house? Can you open my summer cottage? Can you, can you open all of our houses? Um, and we started to see where the trend was going. Um, normally we don't do that until Memorial Day. So people were flocking out of hot zones and they were flocking up here. Um, so the ball just started rolling and then the stress started coming of, well, we're sending all of our men and Bob into these houses with different people. And so then that stress started of, well, geez, are we gonna be okay? You know, Are we gonna be healthy? So we had to really be very cautious about you know, where we were going and the precautions that we had to take. So right now we are incredibly busy with um, lots of new buildings. Um, on our desks, there is a lot of plans for um, new construction, a lot of big houses. Um, Bob's getting a lot of calls for, um, to go into houses that people have purchased sight unseen. You know, they're mm -hmm. purchasing houses on the computers. Um, so we're getting a lot of different calls um, and, and we are very, very busy with all of this influx of, of, of people in our area. How have the precautions that you took in March and early April evolved? Like, where are you now with those precautions? Because I, I, I know that you and Rob are still very concerned. Yeah. Um, well, in the beginning, we were wearing respirators um, because you just didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, we were, it was colder, so it was... Um, it was a little bit nicer. The guys were wearing jumpsuits, so they were a little bit warmer when they were going out and working outside. Um, now, you know, we're just maintaining basically, um, you know, the distance between people. Um, some customers we do ask, you know, hey, um, can you just go to another room? We'll let you know when we're there. Just go, you know, to the living room or whatever, and we'll work in your kitchen or your bathroom. And we just ask them to be respectful of our men. Um, and, you know, we do wear the masks just for their protection and our protection. Um, so we are, are still being you know, cautious and, and, and trying to be very smart about how we're proceeding. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Have people for the most part been very sensitive uh, to your requests? Oh, people have been wonderful. They totally understand, they respect it, you know, and it's also for their health as well. So nobody's ever, you know, fought it or, or, or anything like that. They've always been very, um, 
very thoughtful of them, you know, us as well. And here we are in June 21st, and it's really only been a few weeks that, that construction is allowed to be operational again. So no wonder that there's a pile on your desk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, how many, and, and your business, uh, uh, can, you, can you talk a little bit about how it has grown? Um, you started with just the two of you. Uh, how long was it before you had a couple of employees and how many do you have now? And I believe you're looking for more. Yes, we are. Um, we, it was, it was Bob. We started in 2009 and he had a truck and a trailer and, you know, we put everything that we had or what he made back into the business. And we just, um, he worked endless nights, weekends, anytime anybody needed him, he was always there. Um, when we started to have a family, um, I decided to raise my family and I stopped working. So he decided that to grow our business, we would need some employees. So that's when we started um, taking on employees. Um, and that was about two or three years after we initially started the business, we started to grow with um, some more help. And um, uh, we've been growing ever since. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, Rachel, thank you so much. This is amazing uh, you know, that you can share this with us. This is, this is a, a quintessential local business, uh, a success story. I personally love and respect that you've been able to tap into your roots and preserve that wonderful old house on that beautiful road. Um, well, thank you very much for having me. <laughs> not, a, not at all, not at all. Great chatting with you. Uh, thank thanks you. for letting us uh, go, go all around the block here and uh, appreciate your time this morning. Thank you, Peter. <laughs>